Hallelujah and blessings in King Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Be Ye Holy Ministries, where holiness is a lifestyle. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, it is a delight to be back with you. I trust that you are blessed in Jesus, spiritually blessed, that you are walking not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. And that's what we're going to discuss today. You see, it seems like James and Paul and the other writers of the epistles, the letters that are found in the New Testament, are contending with one constant problem. And it's basically the humanity that lies within all of us. It's the desire to be recognized, to be noticed, to be patted on the back, to be appreciated. And with this desire comes the mistreatment of others. And it also causes problems within our own spiritual lives because we are not in the place of a humble heart, a servant's attitude like Jesus our Lord has commanded us. But instead, we are pursuing all the things that our, our flesh craves after, lusts after, desires. And as we're going to see in our study today, that causes us to become an enemy of God, not a friend of God. And so this is a dire warning found within the book of James where we are continuing our study. Now remember, in the last time that we were together, verses 13 through 17, James begins to address this issue. And he does so by saying in verse 14, If you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, do not glory in these things. Do not think high of these things or yourself because this will find you lying against the truth. This wisdom comes from an earthly, sensual, devilish place. But the wisdom that is from above is pure. It's peaceable. It's gentle and easy to be entreated or to be obeyed. It's full of mercy and good fruits. It's without partiality and without hypocrisy. Friends, we should give great attention to these words because even when we don't realize it, we're being impartial, we're being hypocritical, we're looking down upon others, we're thinking too highly of ourselves, we've forgotten where we've come from, we've forgotten our own mistakes, our own failures, the things that we regret, and we think too highly of ourselves in today. And yet what Jesus reminds us, and James, Jesus' half-brother, is here reminding us, is that we must always take a low position. And so in chapter 4, James continues this idea, and he says, where do you think these wars and these fightings are coming from? You guys aren't one with one another. You're not truly loving one another, but you're competing against one another. You're fighting against one another. Even Paul addressed this in his letter to the Corinthians because they had an issue over who brought them into the kingdom. And they thought better of themselves if they had come into the kingdom through Paul rather than any other. And they lorded this fact over one another. And that's what, what James is saying. He says, you guys are fighting against one another. You're warring against one another. You're at odds with one another. Don't you know that these wars, these fightings come from your own lusts, your own desires that war within you, within your heart? For you are desiring, yet you're not receiving. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight and war, but you do not have because you ask not. When you do ask and you do not receive, the reason that you're not receiving is you're asking amiss. You're asking wrong. You're, you're asking so that you may consume it upon your own lust, your own desires. This makes you an adulterer an adulteress. 
Don't you know that friendship, desiring things of the world, friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whosoever, therefore, will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Whosoever desires the pleasures that this life offers is an enemy of God. Whosoever obeys the carnal lust within them, the desire to be recognized, to be appreciated, to be patted on the back, this makes you an enemy of God. And this should strike fear in your heart. And it should cause you to bow low before the master and seek forgiveness, recognizing and confessing that these inner desires do not exhibit the presence of Christ who desires to live within you. What, do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit that dwells in us lusts to envy? God gives grace. If you will only bow low before him, surrender, recognize these inner feelings, attitudes within you, and make yourself right with God, he will give you grace, but he resists the proud. So I want you in verse 7 to submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil. Resist these carnal inclinations, these carnal desires, and he will flee from you. You will begin to reprogram yourself as we have been commanded, not to act according to the flesh, but to walk in the spirit, to walk in gentleness, kindness, patience, love, mercy, compassion, forgiveness, putting others before yourself and always placing yourself last. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. In other words, desire his spirit and he will envelop you within his spirit. Resist these desires and he will bathe you in the fruit of his spirit. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Friends, the Bible tells us that the, that the word of God is like a two-edged sword. Do you feel it piercing your soul? Do you feel it slicing and cutting into you? Cleanse your hands, you sinner. Recognize your sin. Admit your sin. Confess your sin. Be transparent with yourself. Purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be afflicted. Feel the pain. Feel the depth of the word of God piercing within your soul and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Just like a surgeon before he can heal you and bring you to a place of perfect health. He must cut you deeply, make an incision, and take out whatever it is that is poisoning your body, causing you harm, causing you affliction. It is only by doing so that you can come to a place of healing. And if it isn't completely removed, it will return and create the same problems that you had before. Well, so it is with the spiritual and James is telling us, be afflicted, mourn over these issues that are in your heart, weep about them, get serious with God, humble yourselves, and then he can lift you up. Then he can bring you to a place of perfect spiritual health. But you must recognize, you must be willing to admit and confess that these issues, these problems lie within you because of your humanity, but it is your intention to fully resist them, to be delivered from them so that you can walk in the spirit and not according to the flesh. As we close this morning, I just want to take a moment and I want to read this passage of scripture to you out of the message Bible. And listen to the way Eugene Peterson puts it. We're going to begin at chapter 3, verse 13, and we're going to read to chapter 4, verse 10. Do you want to be counted wise? Is this your desire, brother? Is this your desire, sister, to be found pleasing to the Lord? Well, then build a reputation for wisdom. 
Here's what you do. Live well. Live wisely. Live humbly. It's the way you live, not the way you talk that counts. Mean-spirited ambition isn't wisdom. Boasting that you are wise isn't wisdom. Twisting the truth to make yourself sound wise isn't wisdom. It's the furthest thing from wisdom. It's animal cunning, devilish conniving. Whenever you're trying to look better than others or get the better of others, things fall apart and everyone ends up at the other's throats. Real wisdom, God's wisdom, begins with a holy life and is characterized by getting along with others. It is gentle and reasonable, overflowing with mercy and blessings. It's not hot one day and cold the next. It's not two-faced. You can develop a healthy, robust community that lives right with God and enjoys its results only if you do the hard work of getting along with each other, treating each other with dignity and honor. Where do you think all these appalling wars and quarrels come from? Do you think they just happen? Think again. They come about because you want your own way, and you fight for it deep inside yourself. You lust, you desire for what you don't have, and you're willing to kill to get it. You want what isn't yours, and you will risk violence to get your hands on it. You wouldn't think of just asking God for it, would you? And why not? Because you know you would be asking for what you have no right to. You're spoiled children, each wanting your own way. You're cheating on God. If all you want is your own way, flirting with the world every chance you get, you end up enemies of God and enemies of his way. And do you suppose God doesn't care? The proverb has it that he's a fiercely jealous lover. And what he gives in love is far better than anything else you'll find. It's common knowledge that God goes against the willful proud. God gives grace to the willing humble. So let God work his will in you. Yell a loud no to the devil and watch him scamper. Say a quiet yes to God, and he'll be there in no time. Quit dabbling in sin. Purify your inner life. Quit playing the field. Hit bottom and cry your eyes out. The fun and games are over. Get serious, really serious. Get down on your knees before the master. It's the only way you'll get on your feet. Listen to that again. Get down on your knees before the master, for it is the only way you'll get on your feet. Don't badmouth each other, friends. It's God's word, his message, his royal rule that takes a beating in that kind of talk. You're supposed to be honoring the message, not writing graffiti all over it. Oh, friends, the message is so clear here this morning for us. And it is so piercing, piercing through the soul and marrow into the very spirit of man to those who would listen and heed its message. And what's even more crystal clear is that the focus is upon what's going on in the heart, in the inner thoughts of each of us. You see, if we get those issues right, everything on the outside will take care of itself. But we can do all in our power to take care of everything on the outside. And if our hearts are wrong, then we're wrong before God. Like Jesus said, you on the outside appear to be all clean and polished. Yet on the inside, you're full of dead men's bones. You worship me with your lips, but your hearts are far from me. Oh, friends, let us not spend another day playing games with God. But as we were told in the message, purify your inner life. Quit playing the field. 
hit bottom and cry your eyes out before God. Plead for his mercy. Plead for his compassion. Plead for his spirit. Open your heart and allow him to do his work in you and sit back and watch what happens. Thank God for his holy word, friends, that has been preserved for us throughout time so that we can come together in such a time like these and we can see the need and importance of becoming less like ourselves and more like him. Turning our back on this world and pursuing his kingdom. Resisting the pleasures of this life and seeking his righteousness, his godliness, his holiness with all our hearts, souls, mind, and strength. Oh, friend, may you be blessed in the Lord Jesus today. May the word of God find a place within you where it becomes very unsettling for you because you know who you are, where you are in your spiritual life. You see the bar that has been set so high and how far you have to go to reach it. But focus not on the distance between where you are and where you want to get. Simply start where you are today. Humble yourselves. Let your joy be turned to mourning. Weep and sorrow before the Lord and receive the grace that he has to offer. I love you, friends. I'm so grateful that you're again with us. I pray the word of God is having an impact in your life and that you are growing in the Lord Jesus each and every day. Now, as he wills, and until next time, I truly love you. I'll see you on the next video.